everyone. Welcome to this week's recording of Times Will Tell, the Times of Israel's feature piece that comes out every Friday. I'm Jessica Steinberg, your host for today's show. This week, we're speaking with two artists who will be performing at the Oud Festival, the annual celebration of the ancient stringed instrument and the musical traditions associated with it. It's a festival that's produced by Jerusalem's Confederation House, and it will be opening on November 18th with performances through the 27th. It's always a really wild mix of musicians and of music, with performers who are steeped in these classical Arabic tunes made on the oud, an instrument that looks like a short-necked, pear-shaped guitar. And there are those musicians who learned how to play it later in life, or are just accompanying it. There are Jews and Arabs, rockers and classical musicians, and an audience from all over Israel that really fills the auditoriums at each and every performance. Two of the performers this year are oud player Wissam Gibran and vocalist Natalie Orion. They're playing separately at two different events, and we'll be speaking with them today about their music, their upcoming performances at the festival, with some sneak previews of what they'll be singing and playing. Enjoy the podcast. That was Wissam Jubran, a Palestinian composer, oud virtuoso, and a lute maker. He will be performing with poet Rani Somech at the Oud Festival. Welcome to you, Wissam. I'm happy you're here with us. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I'm proud to be with you. Good. And we are proud to have you with us. So I'd first love to hear a little bit about you and the Oud. From when have you been performing on this string instrument? Tell us a little bit about your relationship with the Oud. Yeah, I, I, start, I started my... Um, musical career as a violinist, then a pianist, a composer. My academical study was composition and conducting. And late, uh, at age um, more or less 25, I start to uh, play the oud seriously. I played the oud before, but not seriously, uh, and start to perform. Uh, everywhere in the world and uh, also start to compose uh, special music for or special compositions for oud solo but what brought you to the oud at that particular point when you were 25 you were clearly already a very skilled musician you knew from other instruments what drew you to the oud the oud um, first of all is um, an ethnic uh, instrument um, I had the oud in my home all the time while it was stuck everywhere in, in my home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I came to, to the oud from the classical uh, European music. So I, I thought that I can do something. I can open a new window in, in, in the oud um, horizon and uh, do something new, more experimental, more, uh, uh, more uh, less ethnical, and more experimental, more uh, uh, connected with maybe contemporary music, etc. So I start to uh, to play the oud uh, not as a traditional oud player, but as a composer and um, a performer. Uh, and I did a lot with the oud, um, new things, um, as a, a solist or uh, with other uh, people, with other musicians or other uh, artists. Right. So obviously, right, that it's something that I just want our listeners to understand. The oud is a very ancient instrument, and very often it's associated with very ancient music, uh, liturgical music, music that really comes from the Arab lands and Arab traditions. 
And those kinds of those different kinds of music obviously come together at the Oud Festival. You hear much more modern music played on the Oud, and you hear that much more ancient feeling sounding music as well on the Oud. Right. Now, in terms of the festival, you're performing with Rani Soma, who's a poet. And what is, I assume you've been rehearsing or, you know, at least, you know, speaking together and, and talking together about what you're going to perform. What's that experience like for you? What has that kind of collaboration been like? Look, first of all, I am a poet also, not, all, not only a musician. So we have a common, uh, you know, language. more common language uh, with Ronnie. I translated some of his uh, poems into Arabic, of course, from Hebrew into Arabic. Wow. Uh, so uh, I know him very well as a poet um, and as a person, of course. So uh, the dialogue between Wissam and Droni uh, is not only a personal uh, it is personal, but it is more than personal. It is cultural. It is uh, a dialogue between two uh, poets, between music and 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 po- uh, poetry, uh, between, if you want, between also two cultures. Right. I don't think that me or Ronnie, uh, both, uh, we don't represent any, uh, you know, um, how to say narrow national cultures, but we we are citizens of the world. But uh, in spite of that, I was born in a, um, in a, a Palestinian society, which is uh, very, of course, um, uh, rich. There are the Christians, there are the Muslims, the Jewish. Uh, other peoples, other cultures, other languages, uh, religious, etc., etc. And Roni was born in Iraq, which is, uh, you know, um, it's more or less the same culture, right? But from 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 another uh, from another um, angle perspective, right? Perspective. So, which brings me to something I wanted to ask you about the Oud Festival, which is held in the you know, in different uh, spaces in Jerusalem, but focused on the what's called the Confederation House in Jerusalem, and is meant to bring together different audiences, Arab and Jewish, and of course, does bring a predominantly Jewish Israeli audience. What is that like for you? What what does that mean for you? Is it something that you very much want to take part in? Is it a way of bringing aspects of who you are to this audience? Or do you not see it that way? Do you see it in a different way? Okay, first of all, I used to play to um, uh, different uh, audience, um, different uh, races, cultures, uh, generations, etc. This is not new for me. Sure. Uh, and uh, that's why I improve my music in, in, um, in this path, that, uh, which... Uh, my music speaks to people first of all, not to Jewish or Arabs or so. Um, my music is really um, born to interact with people as people first of all. Jerusalem is a very complicated, uh, very a very complicated, very 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 difficult city very you know heavy city how to say i don't know yeah you're you're saying it exactly right it's heavy and intense yeah yeah right it's not a cosmopolitan city it's not berlin it's not new york it's not uh, paris uh, right. it's jerusalem you know it's uh, the um, the the center of the struggles in the, in the world and Personally, I don't like to live in Jerusalem. <laughs> I but, hear you. But I like Jerusalem as tourist. <laughs> it's nice uh, as tourist, but I don't like this, this city, um, honestly. I prefer to live uh, in a more liberal uh, cities, 
um, actually now in my age, I, I prefer to live in villages. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I get you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, did, did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, you very much answered the question. What does happen for you on stage with that audience, with this, uh, with this mix of people? Oof. I feel perfect. Uh, this is not <laughs> the first time I play there in this festival. Uh, this is right. maybe more than ten or more. I don't. I, yeah, you, you're you're you've appeared there many times, right? Yes. So every time I feel perfect uh, and different. I know already that the the hall will be full of very interesting people, very intellectual people, very uh, liberal people. Um, and uh, I usually uh, take it seriously. I prepare to this uh, kind of concerts. I, I really prefer, I really practice. I really think about what to do. And uh, But I also like to improvise, you know, to just uh, to feel the place, the moment, and to interact and to listen to the energy of the audience. So you're saying that you'll be on stage, you've worked, you've prepared something, you're obviously there in this uh, duet of sorts with Ronnie, yes. and yet there's a very good chance that you're just going to bring something else to the stage. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I, yes, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, believe on closed programs. I just feel the moment, the audience, and, you know, if I feel that I can fly, so I fly, just fly. So then can I ask you to play something right now? <laughs> yes, of course. Yes? I will play, I will play uh, one piece, uh, my composition, but it's based on Iraqi melody, folk melody. Lovely. Uh, one of the pieces that I'm sure I, I'm going to play in this uh, evening. Okay. Okay. We might we might hold you to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I call this piece Uruk. 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 The name of the ancient city in Iraq. Thank you. 
Wissam Gibran, that was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Such a richness to it. It's, uh, it fills the room. That's really what it feels like. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to tell our listeners that if you're in Jerusalem in November, make sure you get some tickets to the Oud Festival. And Wissam Gibran, we look forward to seeing you on stage. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Once the nation's political powerhouse, the Israeli left has crumbled. What's behind this dramatic demise? The Jewish Quarterly, the leading international journal of ideas and culture, is back again with The Strange Death and Curious Rebirth of the Israeli Left, featuring a lead essay by Anshel Pfeffer and pieces by Raphael Zarum, Lauren Elkin, Richard J. Evans, and more. The Jewish Quarterly, issue 246, is out now. Available at good bookshops and newsagents, or subscribe now at jewishquarterly.com. One of the other performers this year at the Oud Festival is Natalie Orian, a vocalist and musician from here in Jerusalem who specializes in world music, I would say very specific world music, which you'll hear about in a moment. She focuses on folk, on classical Greek music. She studied music independently, learned Greek on her own, translated classical Hebrew songs into Greek, and I'm hoping she's going to sing a little bit of that for us, (laughs) sings in Ladino, and a whole host of other things. So I'm going to turn it over to Natalie. Welcome, Natalie, to Times Will Tell. Thank you. It's great being here. (laughs) We're happy you're with us. So the first question is Greek music. Where did this interest come (laughs) from? And you learned Greek. You know, it sort of blows my mind. I'd love to hear how this came your way. Thank you. Well, uh, Greek music is not uh, foreign here in in Israel, you know. It's it's like our... um, second personality of the Israelis. <laughs> yeah, we relate to it greatly. It's a very similar culture. I think that Greek culture um, has more uh, specific elements to it, uh, specific uh, uh, rhythms and uh, instruments. And uh, uh, so it, it, is, it has a really um, uh, specific identity that we we don't have here because we are a very young country so so our culture is really a, you know it's made of so many cultures from everywhere we we arrived from the melting pot exactly so i think we we borrowed the greek culture in uh, in a way so uh, for me personally i um i had a boyfriend when i was uh Younger. <laughs> Aha, okay. <laughs> All good stories begin like that, yeah. So I had a boyfriend <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, I always knew I, I was going to, give, to be a singer since I was four. That was my passion and it, it kind of grew with me. Like uh, a person learns to walk, I learned to walk and sing. And, okay. um, and then later I, I had this boyfriend. Uh, it wasn't uh, a long time. It was like three months. We were, we were together and he was crazy about Greek music. And, uh, you know, I, I had to suffer and listen to it <laughs> together with him because, yeah, because he used to, to listen to, you know, like pop music, nothing too serious. But then I, I started listening more uh, seriously to the, to the language and something really appealed to me. You know, it was, the sound, it was the language itself is so musical and so, I don't know, magical. So I started digging and I started, uh, uh, studying about the culture, about, you know, there are so many genres within the Greek music. Right. So I got to, to the ones that are, uh, more appealing and interesting uh, for me, to me. And, uh, and so I. More ancient or. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say classical ancient, Greek but music. Yeah, classical, classical. traditional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what I'm going to do at the Oud Festival. It's the Rabetico music from the beginning of the 20th century, and uh, it's really the traditional and it's the roots of the the modern Greek music. Uh, it is really beautiful. Natalie, you had to. 
I mean, you you didn't necessarily have to learn Greek in order to sing Greek music. For me, I had but to. But for you, had you to, had to. Yeah, right. I had to know what what I'm what I'm talking about, what I'm singing. So, what did that mean? What did that entail? Well, I bought some um, some small uh, dictionary. That that was the the beginning, <laughs> like okay. a small one, a small uh, uh, Hebrew Greek dictionary, Hebrew, and I Greek started dictionary. to uh-huh. yeah exactly, and then I started to memorize words, and uh, later I found all kinds of uh, of books, and uh, I started translating songs or finding translation translations of uh, that other people made for for Greek songs, and okay. that's how I. I got the language later. I took it more seriously and I, I, I did some uh, online courses, courses and all kinds of, but, uh, that was how I evolved into, into it. And then in terms of finding the period of Greek music that you felt connected to, how did that come about? I mean, you're, you're talking about early 20th century, but how did the period come, come about for you? Well, I, I was just looking for something beyond the, um, Beyond the the Greek pop, the modern Greek pop, or and um, I just went back in time and I listened to more and more musicians and you know how how you I just rolled with it and I I got there yeah <laughs> and um, it was just a a, a, re- a research that I did myself and I got there. I hope you traveled to Greece in order to deepen your research yeah. and your understanding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually performed there a, a few times in uh, all around Greece. I mean, Thessaloniki and uh, Athens and So you're an Israeli places, so. an Israeli performer, an Israeli musician performing in Greek for Greeks. What was exactly. that like? What was that? It like? was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> they really appreciate it, you know, that the respect that you give their culture and uh, the way that I personally de- dedicate most of my work to it. Um, and they, they loved it. It was, it was amazing. And they, they love this music. So, you know, it's. <laughs> they love their own music. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I can see today that uh, many groups, uh, musicians, uh, uh, bands, uh, young musicians <laughs> of, uh, in Greece are um, making, uh, you know, renewals for uh, for these Rebetiko songs, you know, in all kinds of uh, more modern uh, arrangements. Which, of course, is really similar in some ways to what happens with something like the Oud Festival. In other words, you know, the Oud Festival is this ancient instrument, and now we have a lot of different kinds of musicians playing it and playing off of it. In other words, going back to the roots and finding what they can in it. So that's why I find it so fascinating that you're also performing as part of the Oud Festival of this exploration of musical roots, so to speak. The world is going in uh, somehow in circles. I mean, you... You move forward and, you know, the technology is, de- is de- developing and then you miss the roots and you go back and you go back to, uh, instru- to, um, acoustic instruments again. And I see it all the time. You know, we go back and forth, uh, trying to, you know, we, we, we miss what we, <laughs> what we don't have currently. If we have too much electronic music, we, we are going to miss the natural music and it happens all the time. So that's why I, I'm not worried. <laughs> I know that, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a place for everything and everything has its, its time. And, um, and it's really beautiful, I think. I can appreciate that attitude. So tell Thank us you. what you're going to be performing at the Oud Festival. Mostly uh, music from the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, music okay. that was uh, developed in Greece and also that came to Greece from uh, Turkey, from uh, Izmir. And um, it's kind of a mix. Uh, there, there are going to be all kinds of songs that are also uh, familiar to the Israeli o- audience, but most, but many songs that we are going to uh, introduce for, uh, I don't know if the first time, but, uh, you know, that there are going to be uh, hidden tre- treasures that I found. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And... Uh, I want to say thank you to the Oud Festival and to the Effi Benaya, who is the artistic t- director. And uh, it is really a, a great honor to be a part of it. 
Yeah, it's definitely one of the musical, one of the highlights of the musical year in Jerusalem. So I'm going to ask if you could yeah. give a little bit of a preview of what you're going to <laughs> sing. Maybe something even sure. that some of our listeners would recognize. Maybe. Okay. Perhaps. Okay. So I'll sing um, <clears throat> a little part of a song called Misir Lu. Misir Lu is it's a love song from uh, for a girl uh, from Egypt. And um, I think that the melody is very, very familiar. So you, you'll probably recognize it. I won't sing along, though. Okay. I'll just listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mi sir lu mui li kya sui matia Floga muhia napsi mesti kardia Ahia habibi ahia leleli ah Ta dio suhili, sta zunemelia. That is very familiar. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, what are the roots of that? Because I'm thinking of it as da 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 yeah. the, the mizalu, the dance that you do sometimes around exactly. a wedding. Um, yeah, okay. True. So and clearly, uh, that's that's actually yeah. an interesting story because uh, until today there's an argument between the Greek and the Turks and the the you know uh, Sephardic uh, Jewish from around the area sure. uh, for who who they don't know who composed it. So <laughs> you know, and I sing it also in Ladino. It has uh, lyrics in Ladino, right. and that uh, makes sense. Yeah. So uh, I don't know who who wrote it. <laughs> But like this particular but, uh, piece that you just sang, so yeah. what year is that from? I think around. it's uh, 1880, around... Wow. It's from, yeah, the beginning of the Rebetico era. So are there other languages that are just sort of waiting for your... <laughs> for you to discover <laughs> them and to sing the and to sing music in those languages? I mean, is there like a long list in your head of what's next? Wow. Or is it... <laughs> does it have to come your way? I'm trying to stop myself because <laughs> I'm going to have so many things that I I'm trying to focus. But uh, but yes, I'm always open to to do anything you know. Okay. Around world music, I I really love it. I think that uh, it's really important to to get to know. Right, and I imagine that at the Oud Festival, there is obviously you know being surrounded by all different kinds of musicians and everything that everyone does. It's Again, that, that fabulous melting pot of possibility, of musical possibility. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really a great honor to be a part of it. Well, Natalie, Orion, we are really happy to have had you on The Times Will Tell and to hear a little taste of your voice. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> and listeners, you can go find Natalie at her website as well. Hi, it's Sarah Tuttle Singer from the Times of Israel. Come join our community and support fast and fair independent journalism. You can sign up with the link at the bottom of every single article on the site. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Times Will Tell, talking about the Oud Festival, which begins November 18th in Jerusalem, and for our conversation with Natalie Orian and Wissam Jubran, and hearing about their music, and hearing some of their music. We'll be back next week, and of course, you can hear us five days a week on The Daily Briefing. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to Times Will Tell and a special thanks to TLV1 Studios for sound production help. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to Times Will Tell on all podcast platforms. Mm-hmm.